Hi, welcome to another video with art, design and culture curiosities about London and the United Kingdom. I'm Victor Drummond, journalist and advertiser. Before we start our trip, leave your thumbs up please, follow this profile and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We are in central London and in this tour we are going to Guildhall Art Gallery, built in 1885 to house art collections from the City of London Corporation. It's a stone building in a semi-Gothic style. Let's explore together and visit the Roman theater inside, built almost 2,000 years ago. The artworks are divided in different aspects of the daily life, so let's start with the beauty. During the Victorian period, when this museum was built, the beauty pattern had an ideal of female beauty. The women were seen almost as a religious canon, but this ideal started to change during this time. The painters created enchanting women in sensual poses, showing their lips, their necks, but still in religious situations or copying some biblical scenes. A very positive aspect. With the international trade, the Victorian painters started to paint women with different ethnicities. Look the female beauties and then sensuality at the creations of the artist Alfred Joseph Victor Stevens. But as I said, the religiosity was still an important aspect of the society. The Christian precepts and behaviors were a source of inspiration all the time to the art. I'm glad that nowadays less than 10% of the British population are religious. It means more freedom and less judgment of our personal lives. The centerpiece of the collection, John Singleton Copley's huge painting depicting the defeat of the floating batteries at Gibraltar, was placed in a prominent position in the entrance hall of the gallery. The Napoleonic Wars made much of continental Europe inaccessible for British people in the early 19th century. Afterward, there was a great public appetite for travel, along with advances in the economy, transport and communication. By the mid-Victorian period, going abroad became easier than ever before. Now let's talk about love. Beginning a relationship in Victorian England could be far more challenging than is today. Courtship was sometimes considered a career move, with marriage as the ultimate goal. A single girl was never allowed out of the house by herself and was accompanied by a chaperone. Courtship supposedly advanced in stages, with couples first speaking, then walking out together and finally keeping company. The Victorian period was dominated by the Industrial Revolution, which started in Great Britain around 1760 and continued until the 1840s, making it the strongest economy in the world. This marked the transition to new and more efficient manufacturing processes, 
from manual labor to machine production, relying on water and steam power. The new class of industrialists opened factories offering employment to ordinary working people, causing the population of rural areas. Civil servants, clerks, teachers, doctors, lawyers and officials were needed to run services. Storytelling became a dominant endeavor for Victorian artists. Painters looked to other art forms for inspiration, imagining fictional scenes from literature and myth. Shakespeare, Romantic poetry and Arthurian legend became especially popular, as did depictions of the Greco-Roman classical world. The beginning of the 19th century saw the separation of work from the home. A comfortable and tastefully furnished house became the idealized refuge of family life as well as a key marker of social position. The aesthetic movement became the marker of cultured life around the 1880s, advocating the doctrine of art for art's sake and arguing that art wasn't to be utilitarian. While the society was developing so quickly, the cruelty and sense of justice were still weird and so far away of the human rights. In this painting, we can see a woman being decapitated at London Tower. Through this window, you can see the amphitheater constructed during the Roman London almost 2,000 years ago. Dozens of pieces like jewels, addresses, objects of decoration were found during the archaeological excavations. London's first Roman amphitheatre was built in AD 70 from wood, but was renovated in the early 2nd century with tiled entrances and rag stone walls. The amphitheatre was used for various public events, such as gladiator games, entertaining soldiers and the public with animal fighting and public execution of criminals, as well as religious activities. After the ancient Romans left in the 4th century, the amphitheatre lay derelict for hundreds of years. These channels made of wood were used to drain rainwater. In the 11th century, the area was reoccupied and by the 12th century, the first guild hall was built next to it. Discovered in 1988, the site is now a scheduled monument. I'm glad instead a place of fights and executions, now we have a museum. The art is always stronger than war.